Hi, this is Tim with rcnoob.com. It's build time. It's time to kick off the build of our Grasshopper re-release kit. Um, it's been a, a, about a week and a half or so since we did the unboxing. I've been patiently waiting to gather all the materials that I needed to really, you know, see this build through. Um, we've got some paint. We're going to end up doing a, we're going to stick to the classic look on this, but I think I'm going to go flat white um, for the body. So we've got that paint uh, in the back room. Right now we've got ourselves a steering servo. We're going with a Futaba S3010. And then we've got our receiver and our transmitter. Again, I had mentioned this also in the unboxing video. Uh, the transmitter, we're gonna go with a Flysky GT3B and I have a compatible receiver for that model. So, you know, all told, I didn't have to buy too many additional accessories or, or uh, gather too many additional accessories, but it did take a, a little bit of time to get everything in and ready to go. Now, we're not going to do this build in one full sitting, although I will say that looking through the instruction manual, um, which I've opted for a digital version for this uh, specific build, um, we are going to kind of break this build up. That said, this does not look like a difficult build. If you have not built a kit before, and I'm clearly in that camp, uh, this this seems like a simple build. It seems like a relatively painless build. Um, we'll see how far we get in this round one. We're going to bust this up into a couple different chunks, but all told, you could probably sit down and hammer this out in the span of a, of a few hours if you really wanted to. Um, looking at the instruction manual, First things first, we're going to start building the uh, the rear axles and the transmission. I think we're going to start busting some bags open. And I was told via comments from uh, a couple friends in the hobby, Rich from 2RC Productions and Midlife RC, that I didn't get the full Tamaya smell or Tamaya aroma experience because I didn't open the bags yet. So we're going to do that. Well, that's unique. That's definitely a unique aroma. So we're gonna start opening some of our bags. Parts tree, there's a lot of parts to snip off. If you built a plastic model before, you know, this is a very familiar sight. Uh, it's a familiar sight for me. I built quite a few plastic model kits as a kid. So I'm used to seeing this. Takes a little while to get everything separated and free, but once you do, you're pretty much ready to go. Now for this build, we're not gonna go through, I'm not gonna detail the entire process. We'll skip around a little bit as far as what I show you. Um, I'll build some things off camera and then we'll get back and kind of talk about what we did and uh, what, if any, issues we ran into. But I'm not expecting too many issues, he says now. Um, that said, I'm fully expecting to run into something somewhere along the line that will give me some kind of trouble. So I'm gonna keep freeing these parts and pieces, and uh, once we get ready to roll, we will begin our actual build. Okay, so we've got the first couple steps complete, and I'll be the first to admit that took a little bit longer than I had originally planned. Um, the gearbox is now assembled. Um, there is quite a bit involved in assembling a gearbox, and this is coming from someone who's not done it before. There were a few moments of assembly, disassembly, and reassembly, but I, I believe we've got everything set up the way we need it. Um, it's you know, looking good. We've also got the motor mounted as well. As you can see, uh, that process was very straightforward, very easy. Um, and yeah, we, we've got something built. So our next step is going to be attaching the gearbox to the chassis, to the bottom part of the chassis. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get that going. Ooh, there it is. Much stronger smell that time. 
All right, get our lower chassis. I'm not the biggest fan of how these Tamiya instructions are laid out. Um, there were a few back when I, going back to my assembly, reassembly, disassembly comment from a few minutes ago. Um, there were a few times when I had to pull gears off because I missed a small detail. Uh, I wish some of the details were easier to, to see in the instructions. I wish some of the little icons and imagery were a little easier to see. Uh, that said, this is a recreation of not only the vehicle, but also the manual, like I'm guessing, based on a lot of the imagery. So um, my hope is these Tamiya kits have gotten better as time has gone on. Um, fingers crossed, because I would like to uh, still consider doing another kit at some point in time. So, like I said, next step, we're going to mount our gearbox to our chassis. All right, we have one tab uh, already cut off and installed. We're going to go ahead and do the second tab right now. Uh, as we do this, I'm going to point out, you know, if you've been building before, you know this. If you've built models before, you know this. Um, but you need to make sure you clear off all the little uh, leftovers from the parts tree. All the little nubs and the little things that may stick out. Because those could cause you some issues. Um, again, learning from past experience with this piece, um, I had to take it apart after almost having it assembled and clear off a number of those little leftover bits and pieces. There are quite a few areas where you're going to need to grease the uh, various points of either the, the chassis or the, the gearing. Uh, they really like their, their grease and their gearing on this model, but uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. They do include grease. Um, it's a very small packet of grease, but it should last us through the entire build process. If you have not built a kit before, just be mindful how much pressure you are applying to your different screws and your various attachment hardware pieces. You don't want to leave them too loose, definitely, but you don't want to put too much pressure on them to where you may crack the chassis or crack a piece of your machine. One more comment. I know a lot of people in the hobby like hex drivers and they're not huge fans of whoa, Phillips head or even flathead hardware. I'll say I hate flathead hardware. So thankfully, we're not dealing with that here. And up until now, I didn't see why Phillips head hardware was so bad. I'm not going to say I hate it, but it definitely is not as fun or nice to work with as hex head hardware. All right, there we go. We've got the chassis tub. We've got our side bumpers mounted and we've got our gearbox mounted as well focus shot there all right so we've got one shock mounted i'm going to mount the second one again um, i didn't mention this before but when you mount these your spring is going to go to the bottom and the plastic shock body is going to go to the top that's in the manual i just thought i'd point it out okay there we are the suspension has been mounted, gearbox mounted, suspension functions. We're getting there. It's starting to look like a buggy. It's starting to look like the grasshopper. Uh, I've got a few more, just a minor thing to take out here. But then, like I said, we're going to end here. We're going to pick up when we start building the electronics and, and assembling the electronics and, and applying power to this machine. I do thank you all for watching along. If this is your first time watching a build, Hey, I hope I haven't scared you off yet. Um, if you 
built you know many of these things you're probably sitting there chuckling and, and wondering what I'm doing if you have not yet subscribed to the channel I do encourage you to do that uh, we will have more this build process for the grasshopper the Tamiya grasshopper re-release and uh, much more we've done a lot of ready to run vehicles we've done some mods we've done some upgrades and we have much more planned um, this is my current project and this is one that i love to see coming together so until next time this has been tim with rc noob we'll catch you guys later